there, I found this fantastic organisation of multicoloured spreadsheets and all sorts of things with a fantastic week of programming um, um, rolled out for a group of young people in summer ho holiday activity. And I just thought that, um, you know, we might get some ideas from that about actually Birmingham's going further. Birmingham's got a lot to tell us about a lot of things. So can I just pass over to you on that? Yeah, okay. okay. I think I worked good. He's a um, professional teacher, I should tell you. Usually at this moment I'm dealing with people who are back throwing things and <laughs> not quite that bad. <laughs> um, right, afternoon. Um, I feel I'd say I feel sort guilty because when Pipton ran the agenda it said recruitment and training for urban staff, you'll notice I've not just for recruitment for, for reasons uh, that I've come to. And also, when it says questions to Arthur, um, I hope actually to, to really for you to share some experiences with with me and uh, the others from from Birmingham. We don't have all the answers, okay? We're not doing everything perfectly, and it's still work in progress. <coughs> so I'm very interested to hear what you have to say as well. But this is part of quite an exciting program, training program we have in Birmingham. Um, it's part of a wider scheme we. Uh, work with young people. I'm not the only one doing this, I hasten to add. Um, so we do youth practices with young people with the youth competition in mind, youth practices in general. We do uh, youth outings. We also have specific trips for adults. Uh, and then recently we just set up the Birmingham School of Ringing, which we might talk about towards the end. This is one sort of part of that uh, quite exciting programme. So I just want to sort of reflect on what we've done so far, what we've done well, but also what we are still working on, and using to sort of consider what we are, what we've done. I can tell I'm teaching objectives and sort of objectives, uh, sort of the rationale behind it first of all. Um, how we did the camps, uh, Pip mentioned the brightly coloured spreadsheets, so I'll talk through that very briefly. Again, the questions I've talked through that, what we're well uh, and what um, we're still working on. And then how we in Birmingham and perhaps the wider Ringing community uh, can improve things in the future. Let's pick up some of the things that we've uh, mentioned in her talk. And said any questions, but actually I'd like to, to open that up to, slightly more to, to share any experiences. Oh, excuse me. Sam, can we have those lights on? <coughs> Thank you. The rationale, I chose that picture for a particular, particular reason when um, I was doing this PowerPoint, when we talk about the summer now, because I think the particular rationale for us is trying to get young people infused about me and retaining young people. So this was a uh, picnic lunch down by the canals um, at Loughborough as part of the, the Taylor's Green trip uh, that we, we organised. Okay, and you can see there, Green's not really uh, involved, lots of food, lots of cake. Uh, and they're talking to each other and they're, they're discussing things. And I think that's the one thing that we, we want to try and pick up from the, the summer camp, is trying to retain young people. And again, we've had some success with this, and we, we've had some areas that we still need to focus on. Okay? So retention is the, the key area, making it interesting for the young people. Uh, having said that, though, the summer camp has proved an excellent opportunity to teach young people well. This is the second, last year was the second time we did the summer camp. The first year, Firstly, we, we trained people uh, from, from scratch, a group of young vineyards. By the end of the fifth day, we took them to Worcester, and we went up to the Worcester Cathedral, the ringing uh, the centre there. Some of them were ringing rounds and cool changes on their own, and being involved in the cool changes after five days um, of being involved in the summer camp. So young people trained together, they were infused, and they trained together um, well, and they made massive progress in a week. It was really... I remember Simon uh, was involved uh, and they said, said to me at the start of the week, if they can't handle the bell on their own by the end of the week, then you fail. We fail. I thought, oh, thanks Simon, excellent. <laughs> but actually by the end of the week they could all do that, but more than that, lots of them could, um, could be involved in being cool changes. So I think that, that proves that actually this intensive week uh, can work very well. And the idea is also to, to have fun with students and for us as well, uh, to enjoy it. So year one then was, was two years ago, okay, uh, we had a real drive for new ringers, okay, we were very, very fortunate that the cathedral, uh, St. Philip's Cathedral in Birmingham, uh, essentially gave us a group of choir boys whose voices were about to break and I had to leave the choir, so they sent up the tower, 
Um, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we're very fortunate. I think on reflection, when we look at year two, this is something that we didn't really appreciate enough. I think we're very lucky with that group of actually very key uh, young people, and that's something I'll come back to. So we haven't solved yet in Birmingham, it's something we still need to work on. Uh, but that first year, a band of uh, ringers who, okay, we had some other people from other uh, areas, but they weren't the only uh, main, main group there. <coughs> um, the key ingredients, I think, for, for making a summer camp work then, before you get going, are having the keen volunteers to get involved and uh, to help out. Okay, people are prepared to give up their time. But I think that last point is very important. Using these individual skills for what they are happy to do. Uh, I had an email from uh, the, the, a group in Guildford who were considering doing some accounts. And one of the questions they asked was, uh, does it matter the age of the helpers? Should they be young, young people? And actually, I reflect on that. I don't think it matters a lot at all. As long as people are prepared to work with young people and can relate to young people, that's, that's the key. Um, but you want to use each individual skills what they want to do. So we have one, um, one lady who is who's excellent at helping out with the handbells and being involved in uh, activities with the, with the young people, but has no, no interest and, and wouldn't feel as per, per, part of her capabilities to help out with teaching at all. But actually, we still want her to be involved. Because you've got to use people's skills where they, they come to. I'm sure Trace would be uh, very appreciative to know that the food is there. Uh, you've got lots of good ideas, okay? We've got to be creative here. Lots of the kaleidoscope bringing that we've talked about, lots of things Ruth mentioned in her talk. Uh, we've got to bring in, and uh, we very much as part of the summer camp have it in mind of you're building these skills up to, to be methods. That's, that's, our, you know, that's, that's our motivation. We certainly use those skills. Um, and when Pip came to do a sort of seat camp, that was one of the things we picked up. You know, we need to make sure that we uh, have this variety of skills. Uh, so lots of outings um, and lots of variety. <coughs> And then, of course, your key participants. So what you can see in that image, and I'm going to demonstrate this in, in just a moment, is something that we did very early on. And it's a, a game that we played with the <coughs> youngsters, really from day one. And it was to try and teach them about course spells, and try and get them to use their language of course spells, to understand what course spells were, but really from a very early day, in quite a fun, fun and active way, <coughs> quite a fun game. So, I'm going to demonstrate this. It's our kinesthetic, kinesthetic nerves. Kinesthetic, so I'm going to ask some volunteers, four volunteers. People are going to pick on you. Oh, no, I don't want to know. Fine. Why don't you press the sound? Come down. Three, excellent, thank you. Come and have a look. Thank you. Right, okay. Um, essentially, you can, use, you can use anything. This normally we use handbells. Okay, so we normally do it with handbells, um, but I'm going to use a sharp because I've moved house and I can find anything out this morning. Um, <laughs> we'll do this. So what we'll do with four people, uh, normally we do it with six people, okay? And we number, so we number the bells, so you have one, two, three, four, as you'd expect, okay? Uh, and the idea is that the, the sharp represents the, the sound about to the back and moving, okay? Um, so all you do, nice and easy, is pass the sharp on person next to you, or the on, however you used to be a back to them. Okay, so that's nice and easy, that's round one, two, three, four, and back. Right, then we talk about, okay, so we, then we talk about these, call them small changes and big changes, okay, as an introduction to, to plain hunt, okay, an introduction to plain hunt here. So, um, we start with our big change, which means that Everybody has to swap face the person next to you. You need to sort of work out who's going to be a forward, who's going to be back. Perfect. You practice first. <laughs> so go back to, no, go back to rounds. It's a perfect uh, demonstration. Okay, so that's the big change. We then have the small change, where the people on the end stay where you are. You're rooted, you're leading in line, and one's in the middle, swap. Okay, nice and, nice and straightforward. So go back to our original place then. And obviously, it alternates. So you start the big change, then you go to a, a small change. Okay, so let's uh, we'll start with some rounds. So we'll just uh, one, two, three, four, and we get the thing back. Ooh, that's not going to happen. Okay, and then we'll pause, and then we'll say like big change, so everyone swaps. 
okay? Uh, as you're going, sorry, the, the clap, you're supposed to sort of do this as you're going along, okay? So, um, so we'll do small change now, and then by the time that is, that, that's it, that's it. Big change, and that comes on, that's it. <laughs> small change. <laughs> Obviously, you can just surf, I mean, you can see the surf there. Small change, all we want to. Big change, change, big change. Big change. Big change. Yes, sing. Yeah, sing. <laughs> sing. And so on and so forth. Now, you might, you might be saying, well, okay, um, you know, what, what's that really doing? It's not doing very much. But what we then get them to do, um, and if you do it on Hamburg, of course, it sounds very nice. It's a very quick activity that actually sounds um, quite nice. And it's some progress made very quickly. What we also do, though, I'm not going to ask you to wear these, we have these uh, uh, blue t-shirts that we then ask two of you to sort of put on. I'm not going to ask you to do it, but you can do it. And then you can say, well, look, what, can, what patterns can you see? If you're on the six, it's much easier. What patterns can you see as you are swapping, as you're going out? And of course, the idea is that you're following each other. So you're getting a very basic, a very easy demonstration of what course bells are, how course bells work. And then you can develop that slightly further. You've got your before bells and after bells. And we found that very, and students were beginning to use this language of before bells and after bells and course bells quite quickly. And of course that takes them time before that demonstration. Of course when they start being in plain homes um, for the first time, they're not going to see that straight away. But it's just beginning to get that language, beginning to get that understanding. Actually quite a complicated thing in theory, quite an early stage. And it's good fun. And actually something that, especially if you're on hand bells, you can, it sounds very nice quite quickly. So something that you can show parents as some, some progress straight away. So that's one thing that we did. Thank you very much. Okay, so that, that ticks one of you, uh, Bob's name. You can see them there in the famous blue t shirts. And they did on the there. like half Okay. So talking about those variety of activities, and this is the spreadsheet that is headache-inducing <laughs> spreadsheet with colours everywhere, uh, sent round to, um, to organise the camp. Uh, but what that includes, in year one, we split the group into two, okay? And especially towards the end of the group, that really allowed for some differentiation. So students, depending on what progress they've made, that allowed us to sort of distinguish between what we what were doing. Um, <laughs> Sweet. Towards the end of the week, actually, the, the group who had made most progress, we actually started doing some peer assessments, and we took them to Harvard Tower, to some of the Birmingham, and we recorded them, and then they began to peer assess each other on their reading technique and how they were doing. So again, different activities um, for them to, to work with. Uh, we visited St. Philip's Cathedral in the centre of Birmingham. Again, part of the aspirational side of this really, showing what, um, what, can, be, what can be achieved. Uh, talk about being games, frisbee, uh, non being games, okay, trying to build up that group uh, things together. Yeah, frisbee I'm still quite scared of because uh, I was looking away and the uh, frisbee ended up hitting me in the arm and it's quite painful. Uh, the parents tend to protect their children on theirs so for trying to hide the blood. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, lots of cake breaks again like like cake. Um hamburgers talk to and we do we do um, Tunes on handbells as well, they don't just do um, better than normal playing hunts. Lots of outings, bowling, and we'll talk about that already. But it, it's more than just uh, a colour spreadsheet, it's more than just games and activities. Okay, we do follow um, the ITTS scheme. Okay, we follow that scheme for really one main reason, and it's consistency. Because lots of us were teaching at different times, and you uh, must want to skill a bit, really, it's allowing different tutors to teach different um, individuals at, at different times. It made sure that the pattern was very easy for everyone to follow, and it's a very clear um, structure, so everyone knew what they were doing. It also means that students can see they're making progress. Um, Ruth mentioned in her talk how important it is to get that bite-sized progress, and I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and this allows students to see they're making progress, and you can celebrate that progress. Um, so you can see by the end of the first week, we talked about progress already, but we gave out t-shirts, and we gave out certificates, and we showed them where 
you know, what things they've ticked off in their little handbook. And I think especially it's important for everybody, especially for youngsters involved, um, that progress is, is crucial. Okay, uh, do we class as success? Yes, lots of things were successful about it. Okay, we're very pleased with how it went. But in terms of retention, I think we, it's something that we felt we needed to continue working on, okay? One really continued thing, in fact, he called his whole family into the union, um, and it's actually, based on was done two years ago, it's now confidently being in step of six um, at St. Martin's in the Bourbon. So quite considerable um, progress there. Um, in the first year, uh, he was the only one really to take it on, okay, and really to, to continue it. I guess you could argue he's a unique individual, but we'd obviously hope that others would continue this in the future. Uh, at least it sort of sets the idea of beginning in their minds and, and does help raise the profile of the union. But it's certainly something in Birmingham we need to do more of, we need to think about this retention, and again, any experiences you have, um, it's quite happy uh, Okay, reflection on our first year, we felt, um, again, this was feedback from Pip as well, really, which came to see us. Uh, we felt we needed more communication with parents. Perhaps that commitment that we wanted to set out, we didn't quite um, give the message across, the commitment to what being was, was all about. And that's a difficult balance to get. Uh, if you start off by saying, this is all the commitment you need to give, then that's going to be difficult to get young people in. But equally, in the end, we want to train people to bring the future. So we try and measure that balance somehow. Um, and in the end, if you're putting all this time into training people, you want them to, to continue bringing. Uh, and we thought about the variety of activities and we're still, still working on that. Uh, so we did think about having a sort of parents, uh, a parent afternoon to begin with, at the beginning of the second um, summer camp, to try and get that message across and try and win parents around. And one reflection we've had recently, really, I think, is actually if we bring families in, that's more likely to develop potential and keep people involved. Year two then, uh, last year, we didn't have the benefit of the cathedral youngsters. Okay? Um, everybody's voice had broken that year. <laughs> <laughs> so we weren't, um, we weren't we didn't benefit from that. And we did try really hard to, to recruit, possibly slightly later today, but we, you know, we, we did try very, very hard. Okay, so we had the charm to ring out. Unfortunately, it rained for two days when we uh, were in Birmingham. Uh, we got the local press out on the, the radio. Uh, we went into uh, churches, went into youth groups in churches. And again, that's something that we're, we're still pursuing. But any techniques of recruitment, I think, would be, be gratefully uh, received. But we did have, based really on year one, uh, we did have some really positive feedback from current young wingers in the, the guild. Again, the Wednesday night practices and the youth competition helped to, to develop that. And you'll see on the right, Richard, he was involved in the, the first summer camp. So he came back the second year with his sister. They're the opposite end of the photo, I think they're separated deliberately. Before. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we did a summer camp. A slightly different summer sort of camp, but again, very skills based, uh, very much developing means, very much trying to develop skills that they need to work on. So we did um, observate, um, sort of listening skills, um, we did sort of a mini striking competition to try and develop those um, listening skills they, they had, and to force those links to try and keep retention up. Um, again, various activities, um, you've seen that photo already, we went to Taylor's, uh, and we continue doing various things. That, um, that we've been in the first year when we were trying to develop uh, that. At the end of the second year then, we thought uh, it was an excellent way of building up skills. Okay, it did, it did help uh, with two quarter pills with local guild members, and that helped to show progress for each of those involved, which you couldn't have the first year because you didn't have, um, you didn't have the skills would be there, but this time we, we did. Again, uh, young people learning together in an intense week, Excellent progress is made. Um, I really can't emphasize that enough. Surprising progress. But of course, no new fingers this time because 
we didn't um, we didn't manage to recruit any new new people. So I think one of those sat back and reflected on our together. Undoubtedly, we have had some success. I also began to muse about this. Um, I, th I think recruitment clearly remains key. Okay, uh, if we want to get new young people involved, and that's what we've been able to do with this summer camp, recruitment still has to remain key, and we haven't solved that. Um, social media, so question one is, I mean, we do use some social media, uh, maybe that's an area we can look at. But again, any experiences you have, um, you very frequently. Uh, Receive those comments. And it's a lot of effort, as, as you can see. It's a lot of effort together, it's a lot of effort on those involved in the camp. Um, it didn't mean that I mean, some of us are lucky anyway, we've got six weeks summer holidays, it's not quite that bad for us. Uh, but some people were taking time off work. We had quite flexible programmes, people didn't work to take the whole week off, but people uh, did uh, very generously volunteer their time and give certain aid up, which was, uh, was excellent. Um, having said all that though, when I look back at some of the comments the students gave us over the two years, um, I'm pleased for uh, you to read yourself. But I think in many ways they, you know, they speak for themselves. And the other people just really enjoy it. I like the last one, it's been surprisingly fun. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what they're expecting, their parents force them out for the <laughs> Okay, so I think when we sit down and this together, uh, there are lots, lots of obstacles, and I think it's very easy to feel overwhelmed by this and to think, oh, we're not going to do this because of this reason, we're not going to do this because of this reason. And actually, there are, there are obstacles that can be overcome. So, funding, for example, we were very lucky, the Vinnie Foundation uh, agreed to give us a grant for both years that helped us develop the camp, but we also did charge for the, the week. Uh, we charged £50 for each participant. And the feedback from that, I did ask the feedback uh, from the parents, but actually that was, that was very, very cheap for a week, essentially a week's babysitting in, in the summer holidays. Yeah. The parents, were, parents were expecting that. They were expecting to pay more. So that certainly wasn't an issue at all. And the couple of students who we took on who uh, were from uh, a more deprived background, as we found the towers tend to be very happy to contribute their all. So that, that was no issue at all. So again, this idea that Vinian um, should be a free. My time up. Perhaps it needs to be uh, questioned uh, slightly. Resources. Um, obviously, we've developed um, lots of these resources. Um, we've used, we've borrowed, we've stolen from other. On the work of the people, um, the RTTS um, scheme, the Moodle site, and, and likewise, if anyone in the audience is thinking, oh, we, we could do that, uh, do send us an email. We're more than happy to send you anything that we've done. Um, you can tweak it, make it better, and send it back to us. <laughs> Excellent. Um, support from the guild. Again, it's one of those things that um, it's very easy to think, oh, who's, who's going to help out? Who's going to give up a week of their, their time to help out? Actually, why don't you? When you get going, you say, actually, we're doing this, people do tend to get on board, do tend to, to help out. I'm not saying it could work everywhere, but um, one of the questions <laughs> Ruth asked was, uh, do skilled do skilled realise how difficult it is? Perhaps that might be the case elsewhere. We're very lucky in Birmingham that we do have skilled fingers, I don't have myself to that in the we do have skilled fingers who are prepared to help out and um, and, and help out the training and are very you know, accessible people and engaging people. So sometimes it could well be a case of just asking those skilled figures to, to help out. And then organisation, but again, organisation you can you can get around you have one kind of sheet. Um, right, trick obstacles. Uh, and again, these are things that, that I think we are facing. Recruitment is something that uh, is, is difficult. Young people these days seem to have social diaries that are far busier than, than mine. Um, so trying to recruit is hard, it's a challenge. I'll talk in a minute a bit more about a new scheme that's um, happening in Birmingham and recruitment is such an issue there. 
and perhaps we can learn from that. But um, that's only we seem to work on. And the retention of new vineyards. Okay. I mean, in the, those involved in the summer camp, perhaps you'd argue we haven't had massive retention from that. But actually, they have brought other people back in. Uh, they brought families back in who uh, mum used to be a ringer, and she's been brought back into the beginning, as has his dad and his sister. So that uh, so that's certainly helped out there. Um, and it's helped to create a nice, uh, a nice young community group in the uh, So over conclusions, they are a lot of good fun, and they have to be fun. That's that's the key to it. They're not fun. It's, it's not really worthwhile. Uh, and the second bullet point is something that I think surprised me massively. Really, this this progress that we made in a very short amount of time. I learned to read in a very traditional way. I think. Um, yeah. Well, in the way that lots of people learn to read. And it took me a long time to learn how to play and hunt. Um, and to, well, in fact, to learn how to hold, uh, to handle a bell and to bring rounds and cool changes. And after five days, these young people were doing it. I think that sort of struck me um, jealously thinking, it took me two years. How did it five days? It's certainly not impossible, okay? It's a lot of effort, but it's worth the effort. I think is the, the message I would also send out. <coughs> Uh, we haven't been perfect at Birmingham, I would agree with that, but we are continuing to try and continue to develop this and more share good practice uh, for better, really. I think. Um, so I think that's really the end of my musings. Um, I talked at the start about Birmingham and the training pattern we have. It's quite a, a varied schedule and quite a specific to different um, people. So we have the adult learner out in. Uh, we have been very specific with young people. Um, we will be having a summer camp this year, but we have also set up the Birmingham School of Ring and there's some information packs. Um, I think it should be there on the desk, and uh, Simon, Tony, and myself, you can talk about this. And it's quite a new initiative where I'm not going to talk very long about this, and more developed programmes um, about this in the future, um, hopefully. But it's where on a Saturday morning. Uh, we, we set up three at the moment, three towers, but before in the future, it's very much focused on ringing in those uh, those towers. They start from uh, learn the ropes level one, tower A, and then move through the learn the ropes scheme to tower, eventually tower D, level five. Um, so the idea there is, obviously you've got that focus time on Saturday morning, very specific, um, very specific training with people focused on those needs. The reason I mention that here is because it's part of Birmingham's future, but also the recruitment to the Birmingham School of Vineyard, actually is something that we've, we've managed to do fairly well so far, <coughs> because I think families are getting involved and people are seeing that high quality training that they do pay for is worthwhile. Um, so, I think that leaves, that's the end of what I wanted to say really, and thank you very much. And to say, um, any questions <coughs> more than that, any do you want me to field questions or do you want to field questions for yourself? It's up to you, Well, I'll field questions for you, then I can... Oh, not, not just questions, but any experience you have to share, any... any... So, can we just give other round of applause?